Historically, going back centuries, there was a connection between transportation, particularly ships, and uh, human disease and the transmission of human disease. Smallpox and measles were enormously destructive to the Native American population in North America, causing uh, terrible, terrible suffering and, and death, and, and quite likely um, contributing to the downfall of the uh, Incan Empire and the uh, Aztec Empire. Airplanes are so fast to get people from place to place around the globe. Uh, somebody who walks onto a plane in one country can be halfway around the world, walk off the plane, not show any overt symptoms of being infected, and yet still be carrying a, a really infectious, deadly disease. This is completely different from the days when it took three weeks or a month to cross an ocean, and uh, if somebody was sick, you pretty well knew it by the time they got to the other end. Also, there's just a high, much higher volume of infectious uh, disease in the world that we know of today, and there's obviously a much higher volume of uh, travel by plane, um, but also by uh, ship and uh, mass transit within cities on subway systems, on metros. In a large urban region, things are a little different. Uh, what's, what counts there is not so much the speed that people can move around, but how thoroughly they mix. And mass transit, or even uh, private transit, automobiles and things like that have, have changed the way our urban landscapes work. With all of the uh, transportation hubs, ships, planes and, and others, buses, trains, uh, it, it, worldwide now, it, it is very difficult to uh, track the spread of infectious disease unless you have some reason to, to do so, unless you already have some type of surveillance system established. What we do at my lab is to model the way people move around a big city. So we don't have an exact model of where every single person is every second of the day, but we have a pretty good estimate of where people with a given kind of demographics might go and when they get there and who they mix with when they're there. The best we can hope to do is get some good estimates of probabilities of different people being sick. The question always comes up in the case of a pandemic, should we try to ground all the flights, seal the borders off, and isolate ourselves from the rest of the world? There's a simple back-of-the-envelope calculation you can do that shows that such a drastic measure, in effect, buys you some constant amount of time that's not necessarily very large and is more related to how fast the disease spreads in the rest of the world than how fast it spreads in, inside the USA. So what's happening is that outside the country, the disease is probably taking off exponentially fast. And even if you cut off 90% of the travelers, within a week or so, you'll be right back at the same level of people coming in who are infectious. So I don't think there's much reason to take such a drastic measure, which will have other really serious consequences, not just for the economy, but for moving people around and trying to help fight the, the pandemic closing schools, decreasing public gatherings, um, perhaps um, uh, stopping or decreasing the frequency of public transportation, such as buses or metros or trains, um, are all really good things to think about uh, now before the pandemic, but it's also critical to think about what the effects of those will be in sort of a cascade of events. What's the safest way to get around if you don't want to catch or... Well, I suppose walking is probably the safest thing you can do. There's been a lot of good uh, 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 conferences and brainstorming, if you will, and uh, uh, requests from the U.S. government on the pandemicflu.gov website for suggestions from the public as well as from uh, public health uh, officials as to what should we plan on doing or consider doing, discuss doing in the event of uh, the next pandemic of human influenza occurring.
12 Diseases That Changed Our World. Available today from ASM Press at eStore.asm.org.